Now, when you're dealing with performance, what you're talking about is looking to the terms of the contract as laid out by your professor, determining whether or not there are any covenants in the examination. Now, a covenant is a promise to perform. And the rule is, if it's an absolute promise, I agree to, to mow your lawn, you agree to pay me $5,000. If we have an absolute promise and you fail to perform that promise, what's the rule? The rule is, and you're in what? Then you're in breach of contract. So the definition of a promise is the undertaking to perform or refrain from performing a certain duty or certain act. I agree to sell you my car for $10,000. If you fail to sell me the car, then you're in what? Then you're in breach of contract. So breach means fail to perform under the contract. And when there's an absolute covenant, that's the legal effect if you fail to perform. So that's the easiest part of what I'm going to talk about today. Keep in mind also that when you have a breach, there's always an issue on whether the breach is a major breach or minor breach, because not all breaches are major breaches. But the legal effect of a failure to perform a covenant, if it's an absolute promise, and that's what I'm talking about, not a conditional promise, but an absolute promise, then the legal effect is failure to perform equals a breach. However, if you take a look at the top of page number 21, we define a condition differently. A condition is defined as an act or an event, okay, an act or an event, they say other than the passage of time, which either creates a duty or extinguishes a duty, okay? So you got to get the definition down. An act or event which creates a duty or extinguishes a duty. Take the definition right off the top of page 21. A condition is an act or an event, the happening of which either creates or extinguishes an absolute duty to perform. Remember, failure to perform prevents a duty from arising. So the difference between a a discussion of a covenant versus a condition, that when you have an actual covenant, a promise to perform, if you fail to perform the covenant, absolute, you're in breach of contract. If there's a condition, then the effect of a condition is a failure of a condition might result in a duty not arising for the other party to perform. So for example, if you want to protect your interest in a contract, you've put an express condition, you hire a painter to paint your uh, portrait, and you say, I will pay you provided I'm satisfied. That's express condition of the contract. If I'm not satisfied, then no duty arises for me possibly to perform under the contract. Now, you might feel sorry for the painter, but the painter knew going in that there was a condition to performance. So we have to look at the language. Now, highlight A2A. It says, top of page 21, examine the language in the contract. Look for a language like if, then, subject to, provided that, upon the condition that. That language is called conditional language. So when you see language on the exam like if, then, you know, provided that, all this kind of language on the exam, if, then, provided that, if, but if, then that language is considered to be what? It's considered to be conditional language, okay? If, then, subject to, provided that, if, but if, then that would be considered to be considered to be conditional language. And so sometimes on the exam, you're not going to know if the language is a promise unless they use the words like, I agree to do such and such, because that is construed as a covenant, as opposed to language like, if then provided that upon the condition that, etc. But the language in the exam will dictate which way you go on the exam. Now, keep in mind that sometimes the language can be ambiguous. That means they might say, I agree to do such and such provided that. So if you have language that has both a covenant and a condition, and that's quite possible, you could have a covenant and condition, then you would, and when in doubt, the rule is when ambiguous, we construe it as a covenant. Make a note there right next to A1 and 2. If ambiguous, the court normally construes the language as a covenant because that does not result in forfeiture. A covenant can be a minor breach, major breach, but if it's a condition, fair to perform may prevent a duty from arising, which may result in a forfeiture. So when in doubt on the same exam, meaning you're not sure what it is, we normally construe it as a promise to protect the interests of the parties.